first let me write on board all the things that we are going to use okay so you can take this on your notes also first thing is uh, we can get the temperature of a particular substance by the physical quantity at different different temperatures into 100 for only getting it as degree centigrade we are using it this is first thing so that x can be a physical uh, quantity like resistance resistance and etc etc you can use any physical quantity that uh, you wish like next is <coughs> the coefficient of linear expansion uh, we defined it as delta L by L into 1 by delta T or we can write it as L is equal to L naught into 1 plus alpha delta T Okay. Are you already? Yes, sir. I am not using that mic because I did not charge it. So okay, sir. This is aerial expansion. The coefficient of aerial expansion is delta A by A into 1 by delta T. Again, this fellow can be written as A is equal to A naught <coughs> into 1 plus beta delta t and uh, gamma is equal to delta v by v into 1 by delta t for this i will write it here v is equal to v naught into 1 plus gamma delta t now there is something called uh, <coughs> real expansion in volume and apparent expansion which I did not discuss till now and I will discuss it once we are done doing questions based on uh, temperature or even the other questions that we will be got in between okay. yes sir last I will tell you about apparent and real expansions okay Right. <coughs> the first is that X can be uh, pressure, temperature, uh, sorry, pressure, uh, length. X can be any physical quantity that is dependent on temperature. So, X is a physical quantity which should be a function of temperature. Resistance is dependent on temperature, density is dependent on temperature. By some means you can say pressure is also dependent on temperature. If pressure is made constant then we, we, we cannot use pressure. <coughs> because pressure can be kept constant using the experimental apparatus and stuff. <coughs> Resistance, density, specific heat, capacity, uh, any fun anything that is a function of temperature.
Yes. Now getting back into the seventh question. Seventh question, he has given that this resistance fellow is a function of temperature as 1 plus alpha t plus beta t square. Now what all information he has given? Platinum resistance thermometer is constructed which reads 0 degrees at ice point and 100 degrees at steam point. Let Tp denote the temperature and let T denote the uh, temperature on a mercury scale. The resistance of the platinum varies with temperature as this. Derive an expression for the resistance as a function of platinum scale is what he is saying. Okay? Yes. Now, so as per the platinum scale, we should get the platinum temperature, resistance at the platinum temperature. Okay? Are you getting my point? In fact, in fact, he is writing this as Tp only. The, te the temperature on the platinum scale, what is Tp? Tp is temperature on platinum scale. Yeah. Sir, so whatever physical quantity that, I mean, for that specific temperature we need to find, that will be the XT. I didn't understand. That, Sir, yeah, yes, 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 the... that particular specific temperature Tp, that particular temperature Tp, what is Tp is, I am writing temperature on the platinum scale. Because there are two scales over here, one is mercury thermometer scale and other is platinum scale. Yes, sir. Here I am getting, here it is resistance at that particular temperature. Sir, so whatever physical quantity we are taking, I mean we need to measure for the platinum, so the temperature also will be for platinum. For platinum scale, yes. Minus the resistance at 0 degree divided by resistance at 100 degree minus resistance at 0 degree into 100 degree centigrade. Yes, sir. The idea is you we can apply the same for temperature on mercury scale is equal to the resistance according to the temperature at mercury scale. Yes, sir. So, the difference between the 6th question and 7th question is here we are specifying this is the scale. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, cross multiplying. Just solving this fellow. Cross multiplying. Uh, we want to get this... Uh, R100 uh, RTP. So I will write this RTP minus R0 is equal to R100 minus R0 into TP divided by 100. <coughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Therefore, RTP is equal to. So first we established till here. So R100 minus R0 into Tp divided by 100 plus R0. Just taking this R0 on the right hand. Yes, sir. Now here, eventually this is platinum scale temperature, platinum scale temperature, that is fine. Platinum scale, it is just a scale, right? Scale 1, scale 2. Yes, sir. But eventually the value of the resistance is going to be the same, right? Suppose 100 degree centigrade or let us say 20 degree centigrade. The resistance 
of the material at 20 degree centigrade by nature will be the same yes by my scale will vary if i use a faulty scale it will show a wrong number if i use a correct scale it will show the correct number or if i change the scale in terms of uh, milli ohm micro ohm whatever whatever the numbers will change according to the scale that i am using but by nature the resistance at 20 degree centigrade is going to be same right if respect to a watt scale i am using so what that fellow is doing is in the place of r100 he is substituting this particular equation because this particular equation in question only he has given that this is for platinum scale okay in the question only he has mentioned the resistance of the platinum coil varies with temperature as rt is equal to r0 into blah 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 okay yes sir so substituting r100 as r0 into 1 plus alpha into 100 plus beta into 100 square yeah yes plus r0 no we are just right now writing this below. Now we have to substitute this in this this equation. Sir, as the time is varying, we can sub we can substitute for any temperature. Yes. So what I'll do, I'll take this R naught term over here. Okay. Yes, sir. So simply in this step only, let me write it like this. R100 minus R0 is equal to remaining here I will have R0 into alpha times 100 plus beta times 100 square. Okay. Plus R0. No, I, I didn't come, I didn't substitute it over here. I just brought this R0 term on left hand side. Okay, sir. Okay. So, R100 minus R0 is equal to R0 into the rest of the thing. Now, I will substitute this fellow here. So, now we will get R at temperature platinum scale is equal to this entire fellow R0 into alpha times 100 plus beta times 100 square into Tp by 100 plus R0. Correct? Yeah? Good. Uh -huh. R100 minus R, how is it? T, R T P sir. I am now substituting in this equation, I am writing it here. So this I brought it here, okay. This equation. Okay, sir, okay. Now I put this R100 minus R0 over here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, 100, 100 will get cancelled. So, RTP is equal to, I will take R0 common in everything. So, I will have 1 plus this 100 let us cancel so alpha plus 100 beta this is what rp is 
Okay, did he give alpha, beta values? He hasn't given. Right? He just wants us to find the function. Derive an expression for the resistance as a function of TP. Yes, sir. Okay. Also, there is TP by 100 over here. TP by 100 is there, no? Yes, sir. So, let me first write the equation and then uh, take R not common. <coughs> so, I'll just cancel 100 over here. So, first RTP is equal to R not plus We have R naught into T P into R naught into T P into alpha plus hundred beta. Alpha plus hundred beta. So R T P now I'll take R naught common in everything. One plus alpha T P plus hundred beta T P. This is the answer, final answer. Alpha TP plus 100 beta TP. Correct. Yes, sir. So, simply this question did not have anything, just had patience solving. That's all. No, no big logic concept or anything, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go for the 8th question. First, take it down and then go for the 8th question.
third what is length composition like the total length hmm. iron rod of length is joined at an end to an aluminium first drawing figure is best okay always yes sir iron rod is joined end to end basically at an end to an aluminium rod is basically end to end they are joined how does it yes, going to look like basically one Yes, sir. <coughs> All measurements are at twenty degrees centigrade. Find the length of this composite system at hundred degrees centigrade and its average coefficient of linear expansion. The coefficient of linear expansions of iron and aluminium are individually given. So, first we will take them as alpha one and alpha two. Later on, we will see what. We have to do right. Yes, sir. Simply, the length of iron at hundred degrees centigrade. I think he asked for hundred degrees centigrade, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I am just showing you. Obviously, solution is there, but I am showing you the process through which how initially we use we need to solve. So. I am substituting that L is equal to L not story. Okay. So length of iron at 100 degree centigrade is equal to length of iron at 0 degree centigrade into 1 plus alpha of iron, which we took as this, and temperature difference is 100 minus 0. Fine. Right? Yes, sir. Similarly, length of aluminium shouldn't be hundred minus twenty. It was taken at twenty centimeter before. Hundred minus. You are right. This is hundred minus twenty. Correct. There was there also twenty. Uh, correct. Here also twenty. So length of aluminium at hundred degree centigrade is equal to. Length of aluminium at 20 degrees centigrade into one plus. Good. Uh, this is to check how much it got expanded, right? How much individual iron rod and aluminium rod individually? How much did they expand? Yes, sir. Now, addition of these is basically length of the total. So length of the composite or length of the uh, we can write it as composite. So length of the composite uh, rod, which is nothing but total, is addition of these two. Yes, sir. So length of iron at 20 degree centigrade into one plus 100 minus 20 is 80. So I'm writing directly one plus eighty alpha one plus length of aluminium at twenty degrees centigrade into one plus eighty alpha two. Yes, sir. Okay. So. He also wants to find. So from here you can find the total length, uh, right? Yes. Sir. Of the composite rod at 100 degrees centigrade. 
Now he also wants to find the average coefficient of linear expansion. So how will I do the average coefficient of linear expansion? This is length of composite rod at 100 degree centigrade, right? Yes, sir. So next what I will write is length of the composite rod at 100 degree centigrade is equal to the length of the composite rod at 20 degree centigrade into 1 plus alpha of the composite system together into 100 minus 20. So from here whatever alpha I will get that is the average linear average coefficient of linear expansion. Yes sir. Take it down, solve it. Whenever you are free, check that rotation lecture on YouTube. Of course, uh, I mean, just see. I mean. Yes, sir. <coughs> on that channel only, I posted two years back. Okay, no, no, no. I explained some part of it. Yes, sir. No, sir, I didn't read. Sir, shrunk in the sense, hung it. The length uh, reduced. Okay, okay. Whatever the dimension reduced.
doing what does it mean to make the job possible? Like to, I mean, re I mean, reduce it. Iron ring in diameter is to be shrunk on a pulley. Okay. So, the ring has to go on the pulley, right? Yes, sir. Now, for it to go on the pulley, suppose I have, this is the uh, pulley. This is pulley. But I have, uh, I have iron ring smaller than this. This is the iron ring. It will not go on it, right? <coughs> if I have to hold this circular object like this, at least my diameter should be greater than, just slightly greater than the diameter of the marker. If it's less, yes, if it's less than, then that will not fit only. Yes, sir. So, if the iron ring has a lesser diameter than the pulley, how will it go on pulley? Okay, so what he is saying is, for that particular job to be possible, that means, this is actually a practical job for many people, many workers working, right? So, for this particular job to be possible, Calculate the strain developed in the ring when it comes to the room temperature. Okay. To what minimum temperature should the ring be heated to make the job possible? Then calculate the strain developed when it comes back to the room temperature. Is the yes. Here? First, we have to take the data. What is the diameter of uh, leading in radius or diameter? Sir, uh, for iron ring it is 15 centimeter. Okay. So, for iron ring at 20 degrees centigrade is 15 centimeter. And the pulley is 15.05. Centigrade is 15 point. Sir, so basically, how much the ring should be expanded? Correct. So, uh, iron ring measuring 15 centimeters. So, iron ring is 15 centimeters. Yes, sir. The diameter of pulley at uh, 20 degrees centigrade is. 15.05 cm. Correct? Yes, sir. Now, what is the situation at 20 degree centigrade? At 20 degree centigrade, the diameter of iron ring is less than the pulley. Diameter of pulley, right? Yes, sir. Sir, when they told room temperature, what should the temperature be? Usually we take it as 27 degrees, right? Yes, sir. We will solve it and see. Okay. Yes, sir. Why? You want to take 25 degrees centigrade like STP and TP chemistry. <laughs> okay, anyways. So, uh, what is the problem over here? Right now, if you look at it in a practical sense, the length diameter of iron is 20 degree centigrade is 15 centimeter. The diameter of pulley at 20 degree centigrade is 15.05. The diameter of this ring is less than the diameter of the pulley. So that ring can't get on to the pulley. That's the whole problem yes. that we have. When will when can we say that the job is done? We can say that the job is done when the iron ring iron goes on to 
the pulley, correct? Yes, sir. Now, coefficient of linear expansion of iron is given. That means we are taking the pulley to be wood. If the pulley, pulley can be a metal pulley, right? Yes, sir. He, if he would have mentioned the coefficient of linear expansion for pulley, then we would have taken pulley's expansion also into consideration. Pulley should uh, shrink, no, sir. There are two things we can do. We can shrink pulley or we can expand iron ring. Both the both both will get the same. So, but, but these the one uh, alpha, beta, gamma, and all we derive only for when it gets expanded. Alpha, beta, gamma. I derived for expansion of the news. Correct. So we can't use it when it shrinks. No, no, no. They are the coefficients for the respective expansions. That doesn't mean that they are not used for when temperatures are decreased or when the physical parameters are basically reducing. I understood what you are saying. Basically, if if 15 centimeter is going to 20 centimeter, we can apply that thing. But if 15 centimeter is coming to 10 centimeter, then basically we are shrinking it or we are reducing yes, it. Yes, sir. So that's not the case over there. It can be used for that also. Yes, sir. Okay, we will get it somewhere on the questions or so the length at a particular temperature on the basis of the temperature difference. So instead of doing some 100 degrees minus 20 degree, you can do reverse also 20 degree minus 100 degree here. Okay, yes, sir. That will come negative, the length will decrease. We can use the same alpha. Why we can yes. use the same alpha? Because the definition of alpha itself is this. So if your delta T is negative, your delta L is also negative, minus minus will eventually get cancelled, the coefficient will remain the same. Yes, sir. <coughs> Okay, so in this question, what is the uh, what is the meaning of job possible? The, the ring getting, uh, I mean, getting yeah, yeah, tell me. written to the pulley. Yeah, tell me. So, is the ring getting the end to the pulley? Ring getting? I mean, exactly. Like, if it exactly fits into the pulley, then the job is that done. Uh, I Correct. Basically, the ring should basically fit to the pulley is what you mean. It should expand or pulley should shrink. Correct. So basically either the ring should expand or the pulley should basically compress. Now let us see if pulley is a metal. If pulley is a metal that will also change its dimensions according to the temperature, right? Yes sir. An iron ring measuring 15 cm in diameter is to be shrunk on a pulley which is 15.05 cm in diameter. Now in this statement you might feel that something is shrinking. But when he uses the word shrunk in the first statement, he just means that we want the ring to get on to the pulley's surface. 
that is yes. what, that is what he means by saying is to be shrunk on a pulley okay all measurements refer, refer to the temperature when okay he has given room temperature as 20 degree centigrade we don't have to take it as 27 that is initial condition yeah but when he is saying that room temperature 20 degree centigrade that means we will take to a room temperature as 20 degree centigrade for yes sir to what minimum temperature should the ring be heated okay to make the job possible so we are heating ring only we are not compressing pulley so i am taking pulley as some wooden material or something so that it doesn't expand or compress that's the whole story okay. yes sir calculate the strain developed in the ring when it comes to the room temperature so first we will find the first fellow at what temperature will this thing occur okay so he has given coefficient so the diameter of iron ring at a particular temperature t is equal to i am using this fellow only okay yes sir diameter of iron at 20 degree centigrade into 1 plus alpha of iron into t minus 20 is this correct Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, I have a problem. You are saying this is correct, but uh, if you look at the ring, ring is like this. This is the ring. So uh, I should be taking because here we have length is equal to L naught into one plus alpha delta T. i should be taking length as the perimeter right yes sir okay welcome back so come back quickly yes sir brother <laughs> my brother is crawling sir that's why i turned out the video and told him to sit up so here we have length So if this yes, is length, sir. I should be taking the circumference, right? Yes, sir. So how am I taking the diameter? Diameter for all is this one. Can I take the diameter? How am I right or how am I wrong? What's the story? Uh, sir, to shrink it, I mean to. Shrink or expand, the diameter is responsible. Ring. Are you sure? You have a ring to your finger. To shrink yes, or sir. expand is the diameter responsible. Sir, if the length increases, it would uh, deform its shape. See, first thing I will tell you, the circumference itself is pi times diameter. What I am saying is that. It is a constant times diameter. So even if I use circumference in this equation, pi pi will get cancelled. We can use diameter. That's point number one. Yes, sir. Another thing I want to tell you is, in a given rigid solid substance, in a given rigid solid substance, metal. choose any two random points and increase the temperature okay for a only at that specific point these points a and b i am choosing randomly any two points yes sir now take a rigid solid metal choose any two points a and b increase the temperature the distance between the points a and b will increase the distance will also increase 